Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 Star Trek Deep Space Nine Episode Soundtracks. In this video, I count down my top 10 favorite episodes uh, according to the musical score in that episode. So I'm counting down my top 10 favorite musical scores, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, so I'm doing uh, one a month covering a different Star Trek show. I did Star Trek Next Generation last month, so this month I am doing Deep Space Nine, and then I will continue on to do more in the coming months. So Deep Space Nine, so I've reviewed um, a lot of the music of each episode and uh, particularly looking, went back and listened to some that I remember could possibly be good or episodes that I like because to be honest and to be fair, um, if the episode is good or if I really like the episode, then I will like the musical score better. I tend to not, even if the music itself is very good, I tend to not like bad episodes, <laughs> uh, music. But anyway, um... So I did discover with Deep Space Nine that the music is not as good as Next Generation. Now this is something I've heard other um, reviewers harp on before. Uh, they talked about Ron Jones and TNG and how his scores were original and that he quit TNG and then uh, ever since then all the other... The rest of TNG and um, the all the other shows, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise, were all lesser wallpaper music, I heard some people refer to it as. And I always pushed back against this because uh, Dennis McCarthy is actually my favorite composer of Star Trek, and he goes on to continue to do music throughout the, you know, up to Enterprise, including um, one of the movies and, you know, DS9, Voyager, and all that. And so I pushed back against that and um jay chataway is another composer who is hit or miss for me there there was some of his generic scores in tng but he has some good scores as well um but i went and listened to ds9 and found that actually it's mostly true <laughs> it is mostly wallpaper music the music is pretty standard doesn't really stand out very much and uh, I watched an interview with the three main composers of TNG, Ron Jones, Dennis McCarthy, and Jay Chataway, and they talked about how the producers, uh, they say the producers, but I think it's Rick Berman, <laughs> but they didn't name any names, but they just said the producers of Star Trek said to them, uh, something along the lines of, we don't want you making music that manipulates our audience's emotions. And they're like, Okay, <laughs> like that's the whole freaking point of music. So, um, and then Dennis McCarthy talked about how he wanted to try to do like motifs for different characters. Like, there's some of my favorite shows, some of the best shows, like Game of Thrones, Lost, that have amazing music. Uh, will have like different, different like themes for each character, and the, apparently the Star Trek producers for them from doing that and so <laughs> i haven't listened to back to voyager yet i don't know how much this holds true with voyager but it actually does hold a very true to ds9 in fact there were some musical scores of ds9 i i really didn't like that sounded just a bit cheesy uh and then others that were just like generic like each one would have the same music and there were a couple of scenes if i'm being honest where i was thinking this could have been a more powerful scene if they actually put good music to it now that being said um i still hold firm in my admiration of dennis mccarthy because even some even though there are some wallpaper music scores in ds9 I still see that as more the producer's fault. And it's the same with Jay Chataway, to be fair, because I know that he can produce really good, strong music. It had more to do... I blame the producers, Rick Berman, more for why the music was insignificant. Now, that being said, there were some uh, good uh, scores in Deep Space Nine that I did find. Uh, they were a bit fewer and far between, but it does prove that, uh, yeah, DS9 could have some powerful music at times. So now, uh, let me count down my 10 
favorite uh, episode soundtracks of Deep Space Nine. But first, I'll give a few honorable mentions. So first honorable mention is um, the episode Second Skin. Uh, the composer was David Bell. So David Bell is the third composer other than Dennis McCarthy and Jay Chetaway in DS9. Now, there might have been other composers in DS9. I don't know, but uh, these are the only three that will appear on my list. Um, I know David Bell more of the, has the um, Dominion War guy. <laughs> he did a lot of these episodes during the Dominion War. Um, but this was the first episode he did, uh, Second Skin. Um, which had a powerful moment when Kira, you know, she actually believed she might be a Cardassian. She was looking at herself in the mirror uh, as a Cardassian and she, like, crashed, you know, smashed the mirror. That was, like, a very powerful piece that they played during that scene. Um, and, yeah, and the rest of the music uh, for that episode, I think, went a bit above and beyond most episodes do. So, uh, next honorable mention is Whispers. Uh, the composer is Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> Um, Whispers had some very sort of exciting music. A lot of people say that's like a boring episode, which I disagree. It's one of my favorite episodes. But it had some nice creepy music during the creepy moments where O'Brien wasn't sure what the hell was going on. But when it was like got exciting and O'Brien went through the, um, well, fake O'Brien, as we will learn, spoilers, went through the wormhole and had this like very adventurous, fantastic music. Da 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 da. And it was you know very exciting really enhanced the episode and then of course at the end when they had the big reveal that o'brien was just a clone all along the music was very appropriately tragic so i thought the music worked well for that episode so next honorable mention is tacking into the wind um composers david bell it's not over julian's probably working on a cure right now and as I said, David Bell is kind of the Dominion War guy. And Tacking Into the Wind was one of the episodes towards the end of the show where they did the 10-episode arc to end the show um, that dealt with Kira, Garrick, and Odo helping Damar and his resistance group uh, steal a Jim Hadar ship. And I thought the music was very... Um, very well suited did enhance the there's very emotional scenes in this episode such as when uh damar's family is killed and he was like how could they who could be so brutal and kira couldn't help herself be like yeah damar who could be so brutal and the music that they played for that cue was so good and of course when they were in that mexican standoff the music was intense there as well but what i really love is the note uh, that they played at the end when uh, Kira was trying to console Odo, and Odo was just like, "No, no, no! You know, don't talk. Just be with me." That was that was a very powerful cue uh, to end the episode on. And of course, the, the music they played during the wharf was, you know, challenging Galron stuff was very adventurous and very good as well. Okay, so now. Let me get into my top 10 proper, um, my top 10 uh, favorite musical scores of DS9. And we'll start with my number 10, which is Life Support, uh, the composer's Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> Now, Life Support might seem like a strange choice. It's not one of my favorite episodes, although I think it had a powerful ending, so I think I do like this episode a lot more than a lot of people do because a lot of people tend to not like this episode that much. But I mainly thought of it not because of how good the episode is, but because I watched an interview with Dennis McCarthy and he was asked what some of his favorite scores were, and he specifically mentioned this episode. He mentioned it as one of the cases where the producers let him be more creative and didn't stifle him and didn't didn't make him force him to do just plain uh, on ordinary music. They and he was even talking about how in later years, so, sometimes they would let 
let them do more creative stuff. And he said in this episode, he just went all out trying to be extremely emotional, particularly during the scene where Burrell is dying and Kira is having some last words with him before he dies. And I went and rewatched that scene, and it's totally true. The music in that is really powerful and it's really beautiful. And I think it's why I like the episode more than most people is just because of the music makes that last scene. Because I, ordinarily, I don't really care much about Kira and Burrell. They didn't really have much chemistry, but the music just sells the scene and sells the tragedy of it and um well along with the actors performances too but mainly the music uh, is 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 just really powerful stuff and i remember dennis mccarthy talking about how um he has that recording for that that's one that he kept and cherishes and it's one of his favorite pieces and i can see why it's, it's a very powerful piece so next we'll get into my number nine uh, and this one is change of heart uh, the composer is Dennis McCarthy. Now, Change of Heart is one of my favorite episodes. In fact, I think I had this in my top 25 of DS9, and I'm actually thinking of putting it higher because I'm going back and rewatching the episode. It's This one brings me... I was... Honestly, I was shedding some tears, and a lot of that does have to do with the, the music and the sound effects in general. But, um, yeah, I think this is an underrated episode. Very powerful one. Of course, I didn't watch the B-plot, and the B-plot does bring this episode down. Maybe that's why it's not in my top 20, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should put it in my top 20, but we'll see. But, the, yeah, the music throughout the episode, and like not just at the emotional bits, but... Through, like, the playful scenes with Worf and Dax, like, the music really is playful and unique and noticeable, much more noticeable than most uh, DS9 episodes. And um, particularly the moment where after Dax gets wounded, critically wounded, and, you know, she's you know, the wharf is debating whether or not to leave her behind, and she's, you know, say, insisting that she could move on, like, the music really sells the tragedy, and particularly the moment where he decides to leave her behind, uh, is so powerful, and then, of course, the moment where he changes his mind and decides to, um, scrap the mission and let the Cardassian die in order to save Jadzia's life, yeah, the music really, really sells that, especially at the end where um, Worf is, after Jadzia saves it, you know, he saved her life, and she's saying, I don't know what to say, and he's like, you could say that you tell me that you love me, and then the music, like, comes up and, like, yeah, it brings me to tears, I think this is probably the most romantic episode of Star well, one of the most romantic episodes of Star Trek. I love Jetsy and Worf together. But anyway, yeah, so the music is noticeably good throughout the episode. So next, uh, we will get into my number eight, which is Sacrifice of Angels, composer's David Bell. <laughs> So you see what I'm saying? David Bell's the Dominion War guy. <laughs> anyway, um, I, this is, an, I'll be honest, this is an episode where the music, I remembered the music from this episode. Like some of these other episodes, like Life Support or Change of Heart, or Whispers, I had to go back again and, and watch, listen to the music. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, the music's good. But here, this is one I recalled from memory of the music really being something that stuck out to me uh particularly of course this is more of the exciting like war uh, adventure type music particularly during the um ship battle scenes which blew me off the fuck away this is like the first time star trek has done anything approaching like fleets of ships like flying around shooting at each other and the music again is something that's stuck 
with me because it really sold the adventure, the excitement, the suspense, and everything. But I also remember the music that they played w- when they were on the station and when Ducat was like realized that he lost and he started flipping his lid and going, Victory was within our grasp! And they were playing like really good, like emotional music and also they were having adventurous music when Kira and Rom were on the station trying to like sabotage the station they were like having phaser fights and going da 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 again really exciting stuff and then like when Cisco was talking to the prophets trying to get the prophets to intervene like that music was you know again very wispy sort of prophety esque and worked really well as well but I like the ending cue um, on where the episode ends where, you know, Dakot hands Siska the baseball and it's like, I forgive you too, or something like that. And then it's just the music that really, yeah, sells it. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a really good musical piece. Anyway, so next we'll get into my number seven, which is Emissary. Um, the composer is Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> Now, I used to actually own this soundtrack on a CD when I was a teenager. Um, I remember not every track being that good, particularly the, the most of the stuff that you know dealt with Kira or the Cardassians on the station. I I felt that was kind of I don't know. I didn't really like the the music that much to it, and so at first I kind of discounted this. But then I was remembering, like, first of all, the music they played during the Wolf 359 flashback attack with Cisco was fucking amazing. That was really intense and tragic when, especially the music they played when he's forced to leave Jennifer behind. Like, that music was, like, really hard-hitting and really sold the moment. But then on top of that, you get the the stuff that they played when he was with the prophets. This is very sort of wispy. And actually, this is something I couldn't tell from the episode itself. But as I said, I used to have this on the soundtrack on CD. And I remember those tracks being very sort of, very good, very sort of mystical. And really selling like the feel of the prophets like perfectly. Um... Well, I guess you could call them the wormhole aliens because they weren't the prophets yet. But anyway, (laughs) either way. um, But also the music when... The tragic music that when Sisko um, is, you know, reliving his wife's death. And the music they play when he, like, breaks down and starts crying. And, like, that's what really sold the moment. And it makes me think, again, that this episode's amazing. But, again, that B-plot with the Kira and the Kardashians just did not work for me at all. But during, and maybe this is why it only makes it to number seven because of that. But, yeah, that was really, really good. So, next we'll get into my number six, which is In the Pale Moonlight, the de- the composer is David Bell. Once again, Dominion War. <laughs> Dominion War guy, I'm telling you. Yeah, In the Pale Moonlight, is, as we all know, is one of my favorite episodes. It's one of everyone's favorite episodes. It's a very, um, very popular episode, very huge fan favorite. Now, the music is not what I would call amazing. It's not something that really stuck out. But there are, like, key moments, but I think it works on a subtle level. Like, uh, I talked about in my Next Gen video how there's sometimes there's music that works on a really subtle little level. And I think it's the same here. Like, particularly the player how Cisco is recounting his log entry where he's recounting the ends and they play that sort of dark like music like uh like it sort of puts you on edge like something's wrong and then i always remember the music from the scene though with 
uh, the classic scene with Senator Vreenik, the one everyone knows, is that it's a fake. Like, in the music they play after that, like, dun 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 like, really sells it. It's a fake, and it sells it, and it hits you over the head. I think that piece is amazing. I also think the piece at the end where Cisco realizes what Garrick did and he and he he that he blew up the ship and he you know Cisco's in the in the meeting with like Worf whatever and they point out oh yeah this Romulus Center ship was blown up and Cisco's like excuse me and gets up and leaves and they he plays music that, like builds and builds and builds until Cisco punches Garrick in the face like that was very good that was very good music uh, and also the the ending piece where um you know cisco says uh computer delete that whole log and it had that that music that ends it like ah so beautiful like the music is so good that i can live with it i can live with it <laughs> sorry sorry i had to say that anyway <laughs> anyway we'll get into my number five which is rejoined um, the composer's Jay Chataway. This is another really good romance episode, but I think the music is a bit more powerful here. And as I said, Jake Chataway can do some good work um, from time to time. Um, and this is a good example, um, particularly the scene where we have the kiss, the first same-sex couple kiss in all of Star Trek, which I think a lot of people undersell. I don't know why they want to focus on that stupid episode, The Outcast, which didn't have a same-sex couple kiss. This episode did. But anyway, <laughs> it's the first one in Star Trek franchise to do so. And the music, because this kiss, it wasn't just the fact it was the same sex couple kiss. It was the fact that it was two reluctant people who were, whose romance was taboo. I mean, you don't have to be same sex to have a taboo romance. Like, in fact, in the universe, in the episode, the romance was taboo for other reasons. And they didn't want to kiss each other, and they were trying to resist, and they were like, oh, we shouldn't, but then they just couldn't help themselves, and they do. And the music, like, builds that moment, like, so perfectly, which is part of why that scene is so damn good. I mean, part of it is also, you know, the actors do a really good job playing that as well, but the music really sells that moment that, oh, no, we can't do it, well, we can't, boom, and it just builds in the burst and it's such a good scene but then you also have the ending scene where um Lenar Khan is you know Dax Jadzia begs her to stay and be with her and like fuck society we want to be together let's be together but um she doesn't and you have the scene where she's leaving forever and going on the ship to leave the station Jadzia is watching her go from the balcony and and she's looking out you know looking at Jadzia with regret but still leaves the music for that scene is just as powerful really fucking brings me to tears it really sells the moment so yeah even though I I might say that Change of Heart is a better romantic episode I think the music is a bit it's at least more powerful I think um, but yeah so this that was a very powerful episode as far as music goes so next we'll get into my number four uh, which is The Quickening. The composer is David Bell. So this time it's not the Dominion War, so he does stuff outside of Dominion War as well. But um, The Quickening is one of my favorite episodes. If anyone who knows my channel will probably know this Um it's another episode I think is highly underrated. Um, I think it's really powerful. And I went back and, and watched it for the music. And yeah, the music helps sell the moment. It helps sell all the powerful moments, uh, such as when the um, 
the people come to help Bashir and they're willing to put their deaths on hold in order to help Bashir try to find a cure and they're and they have this little sort of wistful like interval music in between scenes that really like sells like the I would say the adventure of the episode but in kind of a, a dark way and then of course the scene where you know everyone starts dying around them and he realizes the equipment that's out like their music really sells the excitement of that scene and then the aftermath of it where people are spitting at Bashir's feet and and think he's terrible for letting all those people die like it sells the sort of depression of that scene but then again the ending <laughs> when um yeah i'm always coming to tears just thinking about it but the ending where uh bashir's nurse uh bakes you know bakes him to try to keep her alive long enough to give birth and and she does give birth and uh the, he finds that the miracles happen uh that the baby doesn't have the disease it's the first baby born without the disease and she lives long enough to see it but then dies shortly after like i will admit to crying <laughs> as just from watching that scene alone not even the whole episode like this is one of the most tear jerkery episodes ever but the music is really is a huge component to why i cry every time i see that scene it really sells it it really sells what a powerful moment that is it's, it's just really really emotion uh, manipulates my emotions <laughs> so i guess the uh, rick berman would be unhappy with that but <laughs> it really does uh really powerful stuff and then of course the ending scene where trevian where bashir presents this baby to Trevine and Trevine's just beside himself and you know Trevine's the Dr. Kevorkian figure if you don't remember the episode who you know helped people commit suicide and that was his thing but he's willing to put that aside he says it wouldn't be a task it would be a privilege to make sure everyone gets this vaccine and you see Trevine holding the baby up and presenting it to everyone. Everyone's gathered around him like in awe, but Bashir is just off to the side doing his own thing uh, because he's not in it for credit. And again, the music sells that. Sells it like the powerful moment of holding the baby up, but then we pan over to Bashir and the music is just like, ah, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's more tragic because Bashir is still beating himself up for not finding an actual cure just the vaccine and and so it plays that tragic moment so yeah it's truly does enhance this episode so next we'll get into my number three um third favorite soundtrack uh of ds9 and that is the visitor composer is dennis mccarthy you still have time to make a better life for yourself Promise me you'll do that. Promise me. So this is another soundtrack I had as a kid. Because they had this 30th anniversary uh, CD. Um, where they had like... Yeah, they had soundtracks from different shows. I can't remember what they had from... Oh, TNG, they had the Inner Light Um song which isn't wasn't really in the episode but it's yeah i talked about that in my tnd video but also had a soundtrack of the visitor and yeah that's that's kind of stuck with me and i think there's a reason why they chose that because it is really really powerful music it's very sort of wistful music a lot of sort of flutes um, but I think it's very good at doing the thing that Rick Berman hates, of, <laughs> of manipulating your emotions. And I think, because The Visitor, of course, is another tear-jerky episode. It's another very emotional, powerful episode. Um, you know, we see older Jake, um, and just the music they play while older Jake is just sitting there, and the young author comes and visits him and asks the fan questions, it plays the very wistful flute music which i think is, is, is so good it's like really enhances the episode but then again of course it has its powerful moments like the moment where um jake is in his 50s and he meets cisco uh meets his father um 
again in the, his like Jake you're older than I am and Jake you know Benjamin's really pissed off that that Jake threw his life away to try to save him and he's like no Jake you gotta promise me that you'll live your life promise me and they play that music that really like crescendos and like explodes and it, like that brings me the tears like that is some emotional manipulating music if I've ever heard one and again it's the same thing when uh, Cisco appears at the end when Jake is the older man and going to kill himself and he realizes, Benjamin realizes that Jake's going to kill himself. He's like, Jake, no! And they play that soft, like, really, really powerful music. So, yeah, this this one really stuck with me. It's, I think I would put it up there with any TNG, probably elevate it more than TNG, most TNG episodes. Like, this is, Dennis McCarthy is a great composer. Anyone that says that he's not, he can only do wallpaper music, needs to listen to the fucking soundtrack of this fucking episode. He is better than Ron Jones, in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, so this is a great soundtrack. So, But now, I think there's two episodes even better. Um, so now we'll get into my number two, which is Duet. Uh, composers Dennis McCarthy. Oh, no, don't you see? I have to be punished. We all have to be punished. Major, you have to go out and tell them I'm called Ail. It's the only way. Now, I didn't just put Duet at number two because this is one of my favorite episodes. Everyone knows how much I love this episode. It's one of my favorite episodes of the entire franchise. It's one of my favorite episodes in existence of any TV show ever existed. So I have a strong <laughs> attachment for this episode, but it's not the reason that I put it at number two. Uh, and by the way, it's only number two. It's not number one <laughs> because I'm judging the music. Not the episode itself, but it's not how much I love the episode is why I put it up. I put it up here because the music is that good. And that's another soundtrack that honestly, because I remember watching a YouTube video where they talked about, oh yeah, all the music in DS9 was BS. Tell me if you think there's any good, there's no good music in DS9. And I made a comment, I was like, duet. Listen to the soundtrack of duet. That is amazing. Um... And it is. <laughs> um, throughout the episode where you have the very tense scenes of um, Maritza pretending to be Godal, G Goldar Heel, saying the most vile and disgusting like and repugnant shit like, oh, what you call genocide, I call a day's work. And the music, the, like the dark music they play that really hits and really does an amazing job of underscoring just how fucking dire, just how fucking dark the shit he's saying is. Um, I think, yeah, I think it does an amazing job at that. But what I remember most from this episode, actually, is not that. It's the music they play again at the end. I guess you see a theme here. It's usually the end where they have the best music. But anyway... At the end, where Maritza, where Kira figured out that it's really Maritza, and he confessed, and um, and Maritza starts, you know, saying, "Oh, Maritza's dead. That he was a whispering nothing. You does you mistake me for him? How dare you!" And then he starts crying and breaking down, and saying, "Every night he covered his ears and starts crying." And I always remember that musical piece they play right when he starts crying and breaking down is so fucking powerful it is so good it does a hell hell of a lot of selling this moment of bringing me to tears of really selling the tragedy of the moment and of Kira saying no I'm not gonna let you die enough good people have already died such a fucking powerful moment and the music is why part of the reason of why you know, like, combined with of course great writing great acting but but really you add great music on top that is like really powerful shit yeah the music throughout this episode i don't want to undersell the rest of the episode too because the rest of the episode again has that dark um suspenseful music that really sells especially you got the suspenseful moments like when bashir tells 
cure, oh, you know, or Odo tells, sorry, Odo tells Kira the man in that cell wanted to be caught, and they have this da, suspenseful music, like, this is McCarthy's fucking amazing, he's a great composer, anyone who tells you otherwise is flat out, objectively wrong, anyway, <laughs> Speaking of Dennis McCarthy, it's a hat trick. It's a top three, all Dennis McCarthy, because we'll get to my number one, which is What You Leave Behind, composer's Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> And here I think because it's the final episode and because they want to make it epic, I think they took the reins off. They took the they took the shackles off of Dennis McCarthy's great composing hands and let him do some really powerful emotional manipulating shit. <laughs> I, I really get the sense that the producer's like, yeah, fine, it's the final episode, go all out. And he fucking did. Now this is my number one, and I'm kind of ignoring the Vic Fontaine bullshit because that's not Dennis McCarthy's score. Technically, it's part of the soundtrack, the fucking singing hologram going somewhere, but I'll be honest, in order for me to put it at number one, I'm, per I'm not counting that. It doesn't count because it's not Dennis McCarthy's score. Might find that cheating, but I don't give a shit. To be fair, the moments where they have those stupid flashback things where everyone, every character is flashing back to memories, that is probably Dennis McCarthy's score doing the, the you know, from Sinatra song, but an instrumental version. But that's actually fine, even though I think those scenes are stupid. I don't have any issues with the music in that scene. That's fine. And in fact, you have that one scene where O'Brien finds that little toy figure on the floor and they play an instrumental version of the the Minstrel Boy, which is actually a TNG reference, not a DS9 reference, but that was a great musical cue. That was beautiful. But, so, that's not why I love this episode, though. That's not why I love the music. The, the, way, the reason why I love the music is, again, the war scenes. Like, I talked about Sacrifice of Angels, which was amazing, don't get me wrong, but this topped even that. Because the Sacrifice of Angels is more like adventure. Oh my god, oh, adventure, fighting, woo! But this is, <laughs> but this is more emotional powerful like oh this is some look at how powerful the moments this is really emotional this is really powerful these ships are people are dying this is powerful and uh, like they really overdid it and i've heard people complain about the ship battle scenes uh in this episode because a lot and i do mean a lot a lot of it is reused footage from previous episodes like you have some footage of the uh, jim and dar ships crashing into a klingon ship which is from the season six finale you got a lot of sacrifice of angels battles you got some jim and dar ships flying which is reused from the search you have a klingon ship blowing up with klingons falling around which is a reuse of star trek generations but i don't care i never cared and you don't want to know why you can guess take a guess with me the music <laughs> the music sells that the music was way better than when they used those scenes originally and so i don't care if they've reused footage before because they combine it to something new and put some amazing fucking music behind it that really makes it more powerful than any other battle scene in star trek ever and then <sighs> On top of that, you have one of the musical cues. Again, I remember this from first watching this episode on TV for the very first time in 99. This musical cue stuck with me, and I remembered it ever since. Is when um, they got to Cardassia Prime, and because the Dominion forces like consolidated all their forces in front of Cardassia, and, and uh, the, you know, the, the Fine was approaching Cardassia Prime, and uh, Cisco's like, okay, let's see what they got. Put it on screen. And then they show 
all these fucking Breen ships, all these Jimadar ships, all these fucking orbital platforms, and they had this amazing musical cue that just sells just how scary this shit is. It's a powerful explosion, which is again why I'm certain they took the cuffs off of Dennis McCarthy for this episode and let him do what he want because they would normally would not let him get away with something so in your face and powerful and it always stuck with me and always stuck as something absolutely amazing and then you, it sells emotional moments as well um, the sort of it sells the the dark music sells the shit with all the Cardassian dying like the Mar dying and all his resistance fighters dying and Garrick just cold bloodedly killing Wayum and shit like the dark music under that really sells that shit, but then you have the powerful emotional um, stuff like um, when Cisco has to say goodbye to Cassidy Yates in that little prophet void or whatever. And the music is very reminiscent. I, I, they probably did this on purpose. It's very reminiscent of the great music from the visitor, but it's different and it really sells. It's that just as beautiful though. And it sells that sort of emotional weight of Cisco having to say goodbye. Uh, and also, by the way, the music with the whole Ducat thing, especially the music when uh, Cisco finally kills Ducat and like throws him over the over the cliff and the book burns, like, that was great music! That was, was like, ah, really exciting! And sells it and Ducat screaming, like, that's amazing! Amazing moment. Um, but... My favorite, out of all those amazing pieces, my favorite pieces got to be Cure saying goodbye to Odo. Now, that's what really brings a tear to my eye, as um, Kira saying goodbye to Odo as he goes back to the Great Link, and um, and they kiss and, and say one last goodbye. Yeah, that always gets me. <laughs> that was... Amazing. So overall, I had to put this episode at number one because the music throughout the entire episode, and they have like the sad music, the happy music, the romantic music, the saying goodbye music, the tragic music, the exciting music, the depressing music, the creepy music. Like they have everything in this episode, and it's all top notch. So this is easily the best score of DS9 and one of the best scores in all of Star Trek. So that is it for my top 10 DS9 episode soundtracks. Thank you so much for watching. As I said, I shall be back next month for Voyager. But in the meantime, you can check out my channel as I'm reviewing Season 3 of Star Trek Next Generation and covering many more videos on Star Trek and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.